a lot of my clients are friends with me on Facebook. And what I realized a long time ago was the reason why they, they re, one of the reasons why they remain clients, not only that we do good work, but you know, they see, I, they come in, ah, oh, I see, I, I saw what you and you posted, posted that you and your daughters went to the zoo or whatever, right? Like the, it humanizes people. It makes you familiar with them, makes you comfortable with them, makes you trust them. If you see how someone works, you know, I mean, I know you could, you have to take it with a grain of salt. What people put on social media is that they're real. Is that just a fantasy life or do they really have things all figured out? But posting things like that humanizes you, make, makes, makes you, makes that your potential client or your client feel like your friends. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Real Estate Law Podcast. Thanks again for joining us for another episode. Uh, today, it's really timely uh, because we're talking about basically how to market your business if you are a real estate attorney, something that Rory uh, wants to learn a lot about, something that I kind of want to learn a lot about too. Not a couple minutes ago, you know, I got told by my social media person that we're not going to work together anymore. Like maybe I was just too difficult of a client, but uh, I need to go back to the drawing board and find find somebody else that could that could run our social, Rory, and 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 you probably do too. And our our guests might be able to point us in the right direction. Yeah, and I'm definitely gonna be taking a lot of notes today um, because this is a topic that I care a lot about, despite not being very good at it myself. Yeah. Um, and I know that we as attorneys like to use a lot of excuses, saying that ethical concerns prevent us from doing lots of different things. Um, and as an industry, we're not the best at our marketing and sales approaches. So I'm definitely interested to hear what our guest ha today has to say about that. Yeah, and you know, by the time this episode comes out, hopefully the the temperatures will warm it up a little bit here in the Northeast. We're recording it on yet another flurry day here in March. Um, but our guest is out west. He is in Southern California. This is Travis Hecklin. He's the CEO of Rise Up Media. Travis, welcome uh, to the Real Estate Law Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, I, I sorry to sorry to make you do this so early because we're recording this later in the morning here. Uh, this is the beginning of your day, but you know you're probably used to this. People on the West Coast are used to working with people on the East Coast, so you know your days are all you know work early and then go surfing in the afternoon, right? That's that's right. That's right. Right. <laughs> um. So so tell us a bit about Rise Up Media. Like, what do you guys do? Yeah, we we uh. So we've been we've been open about five years. Uh, we work with about 350 law firms as 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 of this recording um all over the country all different uh different practice areas uh all different sizes so on and so forth and um i tell people we do five things we create custom websites uh, and design the website uh, once that website goes live uh, we do seo work so it shows up on google so when someone types in boston real estate attorney that you show up on the first page uh, we handle social media uh as well uh we um uh, manage pay-per-click or Google AdWords campaigns. And we also manage the new, um, relatively new, uh, Google local service ads. Those are the uh, faces you see at the top. Like if you type in Foxborough personal injury lawyer, you'll see a couple faces at the top uh, of the search. And that's Google's new, relatively new pay-per-call program. So those are the five things that we do well. Um, we certainly roll up our sleeves with all of our firms and help them Make sure they're answering the phone, have chat on their website, all these different things to, and I'm sure we'll get into this, make sure they convert the leads that we're, mm -hmm. we're bringing them. There are a lot of people who are experts in marketing who work across a wide range of industries. Um, what got you into working in the legal industry, especially since um, we as attorneys can be the worst clients to work with? <laughs> a great question. Well, it, it was uh, quite by accident. I actually used to be... Um, I don't know, 20 years ago or whenever, almost 20 years ago, uh, I was in the actually mortgage industry and uh, we all know what happened in 2008 and we uh, had to figure out what we wanted to be when we grew up and I stumbled across a friend that um, worked for one of the big box store um, marketing, lawyer marketing companies and that's where I got my start. I, I told him I didn't know anything about law and only knew a little bit about SEO, uh, what we did for our own business and then... Uh, well, it was there for about a decade, and then I guess like most most attorneys who hang their own shingle just thought we could do it a little bit better and take a little bit better care of our clients, and that's what we, we uh, about five years ago, uh, decided to make the jump and bet on ourselves, and uh, like a lot of entrepreneurs, I wish I would have done it five years earlier because it's been a 
been a heck of a ride. Uh, we opened our doors six months before COVID hit, so we didn't know if, once again if we, our timing was right. But it turns out that lawyers are pretty recession pr recession proof for the most part, outside of a couple of our uh, DUI attorneys who said it was you know things got a little tough when the bars got closed out here in California. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of them joked that uh, you know their clients it, it was really tough. Um, to get a DUI in your living room, even though some of their clients uh, had tried. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so as, as a, as a marketing company that works for attorneys, like tell us a little bit about the types of attorneys that will contact you the first time. You know, these are people who are either probably, well, it could be a variety of things, but let, let, let's start with like all the different customer um, profiles that you hear from. So what's the most common attorney, like the size of the firm, yeah. where they are in their journey that, um, you know, that reaches out to you. I say our sweet spot is solo attorneys up to about five or 10 attorneys is typically that probably takes up 99% of our clientele. Um, and typically, cause that's, as you can imagine, they have everything, right? They're the, I say they're, they're the chef, they're the waiter, they're the cook, they're the, you know, the, the whole deal. So they have to handle everything. And so, um, like my dad told me, he was a doctor. He said, I never took one marketing class in, in medical school and lawyers are typically following that same line. And so they they typically need help. They, they want to do, what we're built for is for the attorney. And if they want to get more involved, we welcome it, certainly. But for the attorney who wants to do what they do best and that's practice law. And so I understand trust is earned and not given. And so we need to earn that trust for them. But we're really what the, the relationship wants, what they want out of the relationship is to be able to turn over the marketing to us and they and they go practice law and know that they have a trusted partner that's looking out for their their needs. And the way we structure everything we do is month to month. So there's no long term contract. So that keeps us honest, keeps our interests in line with our clients and make sure that we're 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 up to up to par every every single month and bringing in new clients for them. What's a good starting point for an attorney that maybe is doing some of their own outreach themselves that either isn't ready yet to work with an agency like yourself mm -hmm. or some of the things that they're doing before they reach the point where they're like, I need to go call someone like you. I think there's a couple of things for uh, it, even when the folks who do call us, I, I tell them all the first thing we need to do, because every attorney that I've ever worked with, and that's thousands of them at this point over my 15 year career. Um, always tell me, hey, my best business comes from referrals. I, I hear that time and time again. So our first mission, and, and to your point, someone who's not even ready to come to, to us, is make sure you're doing that. So here's a couple tips. Number one is make sure you have a website. I know this sounds maybe even silly to some degree, but some folks, oh, I don't need a website. That, you know, everyone knows me. Well, everyone doesn't know you. So some folks are getting your name from a friend or family member and they're saying, hey, go call Rory, right? And then they Google your name. Make sure it's easy for your clients who are trying to find you, find you. And so make sure you're cap capturing your Google My Business page. When you Google a business, it's that maps and where you can leave reviews. Make sure you're capturing that so people can find you and find your phone number. Make sure you have a website. Make sure it's it's not turning people off, right? It doesn't make sure it's not looking, looking like... Uh, even though it may be um, acceptable these days, post COVID is uh, make sure it's not, make sure it doesn't look like you're working out of your underwear in your garage, right? Um, and make sure you have your contact information uh, ready re ready and available for folks when they do want to pick up the phone to call you. So I think, I think that's number one. So make sure you have a good online presence and you can do it. Listen, there's free versions of websites you can go build yourself, right? So it's not, this is not a cost thing. And then make sure you're getting reviews. Like I think 89% of people look at reviews these days before they hire a, 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 a company or a service. So make sure you're going and getting the folks who you're doing good work for, make sure you're getting those reviews because that's going to convert more of the referrals that are already trying to find you. Because like referrals comes in twos and threes, we say, right? I go, I ask you, Rory, hey, you know, who, who do you send your DUI stuff to? And you, you probably rattle off two or three names, call so-and-so, so-and-so, or so-and-so. And that's how people are starting their search. They're grabbing their phone and they're starting to do a Google search. And if they can't find you, they're just going on to the next. So make sure you're, you're, uh, you're catching the fish that are trying to jump into your boat, if you know what I mean.
Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many different things in social media and online that you know one needs to do. Uh, it's a very complicated. It's simple, but it's complicated, right? You know, it's a relatively mm -hmm. finite list of things. You know, SEO, pay per click, you know, local service ads, Google My Business, whatever it's called, Google Business Profile. You know, really just doing a good job and making sure that you have that presence everywhere. But it's so time consuming. It just is like in any business, not just law, but it's yep. very, very time consuming. So, you know, to your point about attorneys who want this stuff off their plate because it's not their expertise, they get to go practice their law instead. You know, what are the kind of things that you're taking off their plate? And like, you know, what is a typical engagement? Like do you have a team of people both, you know, here in the U.S. and offshore who are actually physically doing all this, you know, digital advertising? Yeah, we have uh, at this, I think as we sit here today, 40 plus uh, full-time employees here, both mo mainly here. We do have some folks offshore as well. Um, but uh, what we take off their plate is what I tell people is, listen, anything when you're starting a new business or wherever you're at in your business, you know, we all have a budget. So if you can do, I tell people, if you can do it yourself, don't hire an agency like us to do so. But as things get busier. I mean, when, when I started this, I was doing our own social media post before we had a whole social media department, right? Because that's, that's what <laughs> I could afford to do. And that, mm -hmm. that is something that, and then when I found to your point, Jason, where it gets time consuming, you get busier and then it doesn't make business sense for me to sit there and try to think of a, a, a Facebook post for today or an Instagram post for today. Uh, you, 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 you outsource that. And so, um, we, you know, social media is typically pretty easy for someone to handle, but what they, if they're looking, the main thing that we take off people's plate in the beginning is probably their website and doing SEO work there because they may not have, most times they don't have the SEO chops to get their website to show up on the first page of Google for whatever city or town or county they're trying to show up for. Um, so that's certainly the heavy lifting that we typically do because we're writing content for clients every single month. Right. If they want to show up for landlord tenant in Boston or contract disputes or real estate disputes or whatever it may be, we'll write we write that content um, for them and do all the SEO work, which typically they can't do mm -hmm. or don't want to do. It's probably more accurate. I want to ask a, a question about offloading some of this, particularly for smaller firms or solo practices where the individual attorneys are, you know, their personalities are a major part of it. When you start to offload it, how do you keep the attorneys involved in as a as the face of their own business instead of yeah. just kind of abdicating full responsibility for the marketing? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, not only along those lines, but just in their marketing as a whole, what we try to do is meet with we meet with our clients on a monthly basis. Some, you know, try to track you guys down is not, sometimes difficult. So maybe it becomes a, a quarterly meeting or what have you, but certainly as is, is often as they uh, prefer is that we want to get in and make sure that, you know, the content that we're writing is, is accurate. You know, the messaging that we're, we're doing, whether it's on social media or the website is accurate and really get their feedback and we'll roll up their sleeves and then kind of piggybacking on that. The number one issue that we fall into that we help them that, that as a team, them and us struggle with is getting them to answer their phone. I would say of the 350 clients, I've done this a long, long time. Probably the average attorney answers their phone about 65% of the time. Um, and so getting, the, and what I tell people, if if we'll do all the marketing, you do good work in the in the lawyer space, and, and then make sure you're answering the phone. Whether you do it or you outsource that because you are too busy or you're in court or whatever it may be, right? Uh, make sure you're answering the phone. Because when you're, if you're answering the phone consistently, because I know your competition is not, is... Um, you know, you'll, I tell people, listen, you'll spend half the money in marketing, get twice the result. It's just, it, it, it's just rampant. And I get, I understand why, listen, we all struggle with that as a business, but especially attorneys, it's really, really tough um, for them to do that. And they miss a lot of business. So we, we help them record the calls, listen to the calls, train, train their staff to make sure they're answering the phone correctly. And that is, that's certainly something that's super important that we roll up our sleeves. It's not even in our job description, but uh, to keep folks on board and seeing success, we, uh, we, and we enjoy doing it, rolling up our sleeves, getting in the trenches with them and making sure that they're successful. 
Are you, I know that's like a, a one step after kind of your role, but that step two problem of what to do when the leads come in, whether it's an email, a website response, a phone call. Um, do you have any best practices for the attorneys on how to systematize that second step after the leads come in? Well, it, first is, is answering the phone, right? They say, I think 72, I'm throwing a ton of stats at you here, but 72% of people um, pick the first attorney they talk to. So know that going into it, it's that important, right? And so um, the sooner you can get a consultation, whether in person or even it's acceptable these days via Zoom, if need be, um, get in front of them. Because people don't, with a legal issue, they don't want to go tell their story to 12 different attorneys. Let's be honest, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they don't know you from the guy next door or whoever they're seeing online. So they just want to find somebody that they like and trust and they want, and, and, and the stats show that 72% of the time they're, they're picking the first person they talk to. Um, so how has AI changed your business? Because, you know, I work with a couple different resources that allow me to create reels very quickly um, yeah. that I would not have been able to do beforehand. Uh, copywriting services with AI have really helped uh, phrase emails or website copy or anything, you know, where, you know, we call it the blank page syndrome, where you start with a blank page, you're not really sure where to go, but AI might be able to give you some decent content that you could then edit. Um, and I've seen a lot of content online from companies that create content for you name the business. You know, mm -hmm. some of it feels really canned, which is yep. fine. We've used services like that ourselves. Um, and some of it, you know, can be really custom to the point that somebody's physically humanly writing it. But now with AI tools, you know, how are you guys utilizing that to better serve your clients? Like what kind of things is it replacing and what kind of things is it making better? Man, great question. Hot topic these days, right? Um, I just got back from, well, just in October, November, I, I got back and went to uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand of all places. That's where all the, hmm. the best gurus of SEO go and have a conference and whatever. And that was the main topic. And, and really what, what, it, as we sit here, what are we in, in March 20th of 2024, AI is not there yet. Right. We thought, cause one of our biggest expense or what resources that we use is, um, and spend money on is, is our writers. And we produce tons and tons of content. So there's no one more, no one rooting for content to get AI to take care of the content stuff more than I, it would, it would increase our margins in a big way. But the reality is it's just not there yet. Cause I can't, I can't, it ha the content has to be unique and it has to be, we have thought we have proprietary software where we're, if we're trying to get someone to show up for Boston real estate lawyer, right. Mm -hmm. um, we put those keywords into some software and it spits out um, about 122 different touch points where we, how, how many words need to be on the page, what keywords need to be there, so on and so forth. And so there's this, whole process that goes into it to reverse engineer that. So there's AI is not there yet. In fact, there's a big Google update going on right now. That's supposed to wha that's whacking all the folks who did use AI. There was a client that we just had that we told they're all, Hey, I'm going to, you guys are doing all this content. I want to help out. I'm going to use AI. And we're like, don't do that. Please just don't do that. Of course she didn't listen to us. <laughs> And then her trap, she was getting 15,000 visitors to her website every month. A month later, she's getting 5,000 because Google just penalized her for using AI content. So it, I, I, I'm sure fast forward, hell a month, two months, a year, who knows? I'm sure it will get there at some point. Certainly it can help with social media posts and things, things of that nature, but from an SEO content strategy on your website, it's all in the prompts and it just, mm -hmm. it it's more work to put it into AI than just to write it from scratch right now, because it's just, it's not a, it, it has an effect short, short answer. It hasn't affected us in a positive way yet, but my assumption is coming and it's going to make things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've had arguments with chat GPT and copy.ai <laughs> in the, in the chat field, you know, where it's like you give it some prompts and it gives you something back. And then you're basically telling them how bad they interpreted your prompt. And then you <laughs> kind of refine it. And eventually you get, I mean, like you probably know how it is, right. You know, you're, you're fighting with a machine, but um, 
you know, I, I personally, I, I, I could certainly disclose, you know, we certainly have used it for our businesses, um, you know, to our advantage, uh, our, sure. we, we have an assistant that helps with this podcast on a number of touch points and, you know, he uses, uh, AI to help write some of the show notes, which yeah. then we edit as a human. Right. So, you know, I was physically in there yesterday looking at what was up there ready to post. And I'm like, well, that doesn't sound right. Or that should be phrased differently. Or that just, that sounds too machine or that just is not how I would say it. Or you're repeating yourself. Right. Yeah. But it was a good starting point. I'm like, Hey, this is 60%. It's better than having to write it myself. And now let me go in and use my English skills that I learned in high school and college. Uh, you know, my, I, I can only imagine what's happening in schools these days where they're yeah. they're probably policing AI written papers constantly. I I, oof, I don't even know. I, I feel bad for our daughter as she's going to <laughs> start having to like write these things soon. I don't even know where it's going, but yeah, that'd um, be that'd be tough. I, I, I yeah. don't I don't envy uh, professors out there trying to figure out if it is or isn't. Yeah, it's like whack-a-mole also because, you know, you don't want plagiarism. You don't want this to be written by somebody that's not you turning the work in. But then we get into our professional worlds and we see how these tools could actually help our professional worlds. Yeah. Um, and I do, I do think they can help. I mean, like they they they, they take time away. Um, you know, some of the content that we've posted online, you know, is done through AI. You know, we've done some social media Actually, I, I don't think we do the social media post anymore using AI because it just doesn't it doesn't quite capture the essence. I have seen lots of great um, conversations about how, you know, one of the fields of the future is understanding the prompts and understanding kind of how yes. to guide the AI. Right. Instead yep. of just copy paste what's mm -hmm. out of there. Um, but, man, it's tempting. Like, so if you're listening to this and all you're doing is AI copy, like, you know, Google's going to see through it. Yes. Your clients are going to see through it. Your peers are going to see through it. It's just going to feel so disingenuine. Um, but with that said, you know, it's it's incumbent upon you um, as an agency that, you know, is there for lead generation and branding, uh, you know, for clients, you know, of all types of attorneys to stay on top of this. And yeah. some of the, the some of the SEO stuff that you guys have already talked about, like it's giving me night sweats. Like this is like it is such a complicated world, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it's listen. Google's always moving the cheese, right? There, if you if you read that book, like oh, it's, yeah. it's it's a, it's constantly evolving. I'm sure AI is going, you know, going to be there. And then when that's not a differentiator, because right now Google looks at content, who's the most authoritative on a particular subject from a fifty thousand foot view. That's who they serve up in the search engines, right? Um, and then when when it when AI gets there, where everybody it's a level playing field for content. My guess it's going to be something else, whether it's backlinks or whatever it may be coming in the future. But as it sits right now, now we use a lot of AI for our own marketing copy for certain, you know, certain certain type of um, um, marketing things that we do or emails we send out because, you know, I, I can barely spell my name, but you know, so Chat GDP comes in uh, pretty handy when when I'm posting stuff. But for for our clients, yeah, with from an SEO content strategy just not there yet yeah travis i definitely can't spell your name you know based on how you pronounce it <laughs> we, were, we were saying offline you know i was like tell me how you pronounce your name and i was like that would not have been my first two guesses <laughs> no, never is never yeah. is up uh, rory you had a question yeah so i just i actually want to move um from the seo to the social media aspect of it and i kind of want to ask just a really fundamental question and that is what's the purpose of uh social media in law for in legal marketing and then what some good and some bad content that attorneys put out there um, in furtherance of that goal. Okay. So in my opinion, there's there's two reasons for, for social media. Um, number one is getting more exposure, right? And that's where you, the use of Facebook ads, Instagram ads, where you're getting in, in front of a bigger footprint or certain demographic that you're trying to get in front of. So if I'm looking, you know, on, on Facebook, if I'm trying to, I want your ad to show up to everybody in Massachusetts that are male from the age of 24 to 64, I can get your ad out in front of them. The second thing, so that that's that those are ads. Now, from a posting standpoint, where it's very powerful is keeping top of mind, right? You're seeing things, we're all on social media, uh, we're scrolling through, we're watching things, we're interacting with things, then we see that person or business more often, but staying top of mind. Right. It's the same reason. And, 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 and when somebody runs into a real estate issue, or in, in your case, Rory, and 
you know, they need to hire an attorney. It's who they saw last typically. Right. And social media does that in a very, is a very powerful tool in that sense. It's the reason why we see friends and family members that we haven't seen in a long time, but we're, we're linked up, up to them on social media. And you almost feel like you're lying when I go, Hey, Rory, how have you been? I'm like, why did I just, I feel like I'm lying when I'm asking that. Cause I know you just went on vacation. You know, mm -hmm. I saw you just bought a new house. I, you know, I saw your kid just what, you know, saw what they got for, you know, for, for their birthday. So you like know all this stuff. So from a business standpoint, putting out content um, on a continual basis to stay top of mind, I think is super, super powerful, you know, cause you have your sphere of influence, you have your, your network and your, you know, especially with attorneys, I get this a lot over the years, right? I was golfing with a buddy of mine who he does uh, mergers and acquisitions. This was some time ago. And uh, I go, do you, do, do people know what type of law you do? Like Travis, I have to remind them all the time. That's why I get calls for DUIs and car crashes and divorces. And I'm like, I, I'm going to, I am I do mortgages acquisitions in a, you know, corporate, corporate firm. Right. And they go, he goes, and, and to take that further, he's all, my dad, I've told him what I do every single time, every single Christmas and, and Thanksgiving. And when I fly back to their house, they go, dad, how, you know, my dad goes, Hey, how was that? Any, any trials lately? And they're like, Dad, I do mergers and acquisitions. There's no, it's not like what you see on TV. So making sure people know what you do, right? And making, reminding them of what they do. So that's, that's super, super important to keep top of mind. No question. I'm not oh, sure and bad content, bad content. Here's a tip. No one cares <laughs> about you. People care about how you can solve their problem. Stop beating your chest and telling us how great you are. Tell us how you can solve their problem. That would be my big tip to people um, that because you just see. So I get it. You're trying to get let people know you're good at what you do. But that's not why people are aren't gonna, are going to look you up. They're going to look you up because they heard of a solution you had to their problem. So make sure you're speaking to them and not saying how great you are all the time. Now, now, what about the human side of it, though? You know, in a lot of other industries, people try to humanize themselves using information about themselves, their families, whatever it is. Um, sure. I get it. You know, you're not pounding your chest that you won this trial or anything from the real estate agent side. You know, I always kind of shudder when all I see is an agent posting, you know, houses that they either sold or houses that they listed. Um, isn't it, isn't it fair to say that people like to work with people that they like to do business with? So it's good to know a little bit about who they are as a human. Absolutely. I mean, I, I a lot of my clients are friends with me on Facebook. And what I realized a long time ago was the reason why they, they re one of the reasons why they remain clients, not only that we do good work, but, you know, they see, I, they come in, ah, oh, I see, I, I saw what you and you posted, posted that you and your daughters went to the zoo or whatever, right? Like the, it humanizes people and makes you familiar with them, makes you comfortable with them, makes you trust them. If you see how someone work, you know, I mean, I know you could, you have to take it with a grain of salt. What people put on social media is that they're real. Is that just a fantasy life or do they really have things all figured out? But Posting things like that humanizes you, make makes makes you makes that your potential client or your client feel like your friends, and, mm -hmm. and 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 you certainly want that. Okay, let let me give a real life example. Also, you know, related to what I know about what Rory does, because not of all, all of us know what each other does. I don't even know what he does all the time. Sometimes he has no idea what I do, and our <laughs> parents don't know what we do, right? So, okay, so I know that a lot of Rory's clients are 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 other businesses. Right, they're they're B two B, so it's not necessarily somebody that's a personal injury case that's looking for a personal injury attorney. A lot of who he does business with are mortgage brokers, uh, yep. local banks, national banks. Um, you know, along with you know land disputes and contracts and wills and and estates and that kind of stuff. So, do do you guys have recommendations as to how a attorney who whose primary target is another business? can can do some you know good smart marketing online first i would say listen business and real estate lawyers for falsely think that their clients aren't online they they just are now listen i, I tell business attorneys like i might not bring you wells fargo or you know walmart or something like that but a lot of small to medium-sized businesses don't aren't sitting there golfing with attorneys every Sunday. You know, when issues happen, they turn around and they're trying to find an attorney just like anybody else. But what I would tell someone like Rory is, are you being a thought leader in your industry? Right? Are people are people are you out there giving free advice 
to your potential clientele, right? What are some tips and tricks that your clients would want to know? And you're in, and you're offering that on social media and you'll find that you'll, you'll have a huge following if you're helping them with their business. And don't be afraid in today's world, people are so afraid of giving away the keys to the castle. Listen, pay it forward, offer advice, and they're going to come. What, what Rory does for a living is, is difficult. And they, you know, a lot of people try to do in any industry, you know, try to do it themselves in our industry as well. And they typically find it's too time consuming or too difficult. And then they, they end up calling the trusted resource that they've seen over and over and over again. So make sure you're, you're the thought leader in your particular industry. I think that's a great place to start. And would you recommend that people focus on any one particular platform these days if they want to be that thought leader? Like, is that more of a LinkedIn strategy or can you still be a thought leader on Instagram um, and and places like TikTok? I think it's all, right? I mean, there there's so many different platforms. I think you pick a couple, two, three that you're comfortable with, that you use. And certainly, you know, I, I, I would, my, my advice would be different for a personal injury attorney who is a B2C kind of thing, uh, business as opposed to a, a B2B. Certainly LinkedIn may be more favorable, certainly, uh, than uh, than Facebook or something. Um, know your demographic. I mean, you can dig in and look online who's, you know, the younger generation is on TikTok and, and, and Instagram and then, you know, the old fogies like me who are approaching 50 are on Facebook or what have you. Um, and then business people are on LinkedIn, Twitter, people are reading, you know, kind of across the board. So I, I, as many of them as you can do now, there there's tools you can use where you can one piece of content, post it there. And then it, it, it then uh, sends it to all the different platforms. So then it can, you know, you're not, you don't feel like you have to go post on every single one and it's too time consuming, but there are, there are, there's software out there that can help you with that. So. I guess my answer is as many as you can yeah. <laughs> cover. Hey, Rory, what I took from that is that I, I guess I'm an old fogey too, because I heard <laughs> Travis approaching 50. I certainly am approaching 50. Travis, I like to refer to it as Generation X. There we That's go. I, I'm Love with Gen you. X. Let's call it Gen X, all right? But yeah. <laughs> um, before we get to our final questions, Rory, do you have anything, uh, any other thoughts for Travis? Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to ask is I've, I've heard this used to justify, you know, why we're different or, you know, why we can't uh, do like uh, robust marketing efforts in the, in the legal world. And that is the kind of ethical, the code of ethics that are out there that kind of limit our hands in how much we can solicit, limit our hands in um, what exactly we can say in our advertisements. Do you run up against um, either attorneys who are using this as an excuse, or do you run up against any actual um, ethical rules that attorneys have that really do limit what they can do in their marketing? Well, listen, I, I don't know where your audience is, and they're in a bunch of different states. So I'm, I'm, I am not a lawyer, so I'll, I'll shy away from the legal. But uh, long story short, is there we're, we're we know what. You know what words you can't expert and things of that nature. Or make sure you stay away, steer away from those, those types of phrases and things of that nature. Um, but I think it's more of an excuse. I mean, there's certainly court cases where you guys that have been passed in the '70s where you guys can market and do all those different things. And I think it's to your point more of an excuse than anything. And but yes, you have to be careful. You, you know, for the attorneys out there, you certainly want to use like take us out of the picture. I certainly think you should pick a marketing company that specializes in attorneys for that very reason. So they're not getting you in any hot water and know what you can and can't say. Excellent advice. I'm sure we'd hear a lot more um, from you based on what we're seeing online. And if we had a personal consultation with you after we ask these questions, um, you can make sure that you tell people where they can get a hold of you so they uh, can improve their legal practice and get some great marketing and lead flow um, this year. Um, but let's ask the final three questions that we ask all of our guests on the podcast. Uh, they're really simple questions. The first one is if you can get on stage for a half an hour and talk about any subject in the world with no preparation, what would that be? Uh, probably legal marketing. I mean, maybe, maybe my kids, cause <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a proud dad of two, two daughters, five and seven. Uh, but uh, no legal marketing is, is where I, where I hang my hat. I've been doing this for a decade and a half and I'm very, very passionate about it. And our goal is to help, you know, a thousand law firms uh, double in size. And so that's, that's our mission. Great. Well, you're a third of the way there, right? 
Three, That's right. 300, three, That's yeah. right. Um, second question, tell us something that happened early in your life or career that impacts the way that you're working today. Oh, goodness. Um, I played baseball all the way through college. Uh, tried to play a little bit professionally and kind of hit my my ceiling there. But uh, I think just the work ethic in the, in the, uh, that I learned and playing baseball for that long, playing team sports for that long is certainly uh, – um, impacted what we do here in, in a competitive nature and a work ethic and all that good stuff. I think that's, that's the driving force and a lot of great lessons. Why well, I want my kids to play sports. I don't care which one, but play, play something and, and, and get those life lessons. Certainly. I see it now where he's got that like build that, that kind of, you know, baseball player build up here. Were you, <laughs> what, what was, uh, what position did you play? Oh my God. It was a hundred years ago, but I played first and third long First, 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 first base and third base. Yeah. Did did you did you make it to the minors anywhere? No, I I, I signed a, a independent professional contract. Yeah. Went back to spring training and was there for about two weeks and got released and then I had to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. But it was but, fun. Know, it was great. The, the the train ends for everybody. You know, even yes. like the you know even even Otani is going to have you know the final wherever he goes last, right? But yeah, you know so, sometimes the train ends in high school, college, independent ball, single A. You know, yeah. and, and here you are instead. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, good. Well, thank you for sharing that story. Uh, final question we have. Tell us uh, something you're listening to or watching or reading these days. Anything in the world? Um, I just read a book called Buy Back Your Time. Um, the name or the author escapes me, but uh, it was a really, really powerful book about growing a business and just outsourcing um tasks and things as we all grow a business uh you know that that come on your plate that are better off being outsourced it's not mm -hmm. worth your time not, not that it's not worth your time but it's 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 more financially responsible to to outsource those things but buy back your time is really really eye-opening because i a lot of business owners i find that you know you feel like you have to control everything and you and you know you got to do everything but it puts a glass ceiling on what you're what you're able to accomplish and this book kind of you know those books that you read and it just kind of it's a bullseye hits you right in the between the mm -hmm. eyes you're like god i'm guilty of all of this and that was that was the latest book i just read that was that was awesome well it's a good segue for people that need to buy their time back especially on the social media and lead generation side they can certainly call you guys and uh, <laughs> there you go you can help them with that uh so rise up media is your website right yes sir and rise yeah. rise is spelled with a z like i told you we, we don't we we didn't use Chat GDP when we uh, came up with our uh, the, t the the name of our company, but yeah, it's RiseUpMedia.com is our our website. Yep. You can get a hold of us there. We will link that in the show notes along with your LinkedIn, Instagram, all that fun stuff, so people could reach out to you in all those different manners. Um, cool. Rory, where can people get a hold of you? Um, if you just go to RoryGill.com, you can see the different ways to get in touch with me and the different ways that I can work with you, including uh, real estate counsel. Yes. All right. And if you like this episode, you want to hear more, uh, you can go to realestatelawpodcast.com. If you have subscribed to this episode, you can watch them on YouTube and on iTunes and all those fun places if you want to listen to it instead. Uh, if you want to be a guest on the podcast, reach out to us at realestatelawpodcast.com. We'll read all your comments and messages, and we love five-star reviews. So I got to ask, for, right? Got to, Travis, got to ask for the reviews, right? If you're, ask for the reviews. Ask for the reviews. So if you're hearing this, we love five-star reviews. So please go ahead and do that. It will help get our message out to more people. And real estate attorneys need to hear things like this conversation. So um, Travis, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Best of luck with Rise Up Media and you know getting to that thousand goal of helping a thousand attorneys double their practices. Thanks so much. Appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.